we're going to talk about uh, placing pacemakers. And the key to placing the pacemakers is it's nothing more than putting a CVP in somebody and floating a wire in. Now all the equipment for the transvenous pacemaker is in the critical care cabinet beside resuscitation room B. When you look in the cabinet, this is what you're going to find. This is the pacer kit. Looks like this. Comes in a blue kit like this. And there's going to be a red tray there that's got the pacer boxes. These are the two pacer boxes. Basically, they're generators. And what they do is they're going to be the things that generate the pulse for the transvenous pacemaker that you're going to use. This is the one we use most of the time, although occasionally you may see this one used, and I'll talk about this at the end. But we're going to focus mostly on this one. As you can see, the pacemaker is fine. This is a generator box. There's nothing that connects it to the pacemaker, so you're going to have to get that set up. When the doc decides that the patient needs a pacemaker, what you're going to need is three things. The pacer kit, the generator box, and the connector cables. These are disposable. They come in a kit like this. The little brown cables, and we're going to show you how to hook them up. I'm going to put this off to the side here. It's just like a cooking show. I really like this. Okay. <laughs> If you were to open this kit up, what you would find would be the following. This is the introducer, and it's the same as any other CVP that you see put in. So if you know the doc's going to put a pacer in, you know they're going to have to put it in a CVP, you want to get the, the ultrasound ready as well, because the ideal place to put it is to go through the right internal juggler, because it's a nice straight shot down into the heart. Some people like to put it through the subclavian, you can put it through the opposite internal juggler, but basically you're coming in above the heart in either the subclavian or the internal juggler route. This is the same as any other CVP that you see us put in. You'll have to hook us up a bag of IV fluid to run in through here, and you really want that because that fluid running through this will help float the pacemaker in. The doc's going to go ahead and place this in, and once this is in place, then what they'll do is you'll open up the actual pacer equipment and get the pacemaker in. This is a transcutaneous pacing system, or transvenous rather. If you open it up, what you're going to find in there is a wire, there'll be this sleeve, there'll be a small syringe, and some other little connectors there. The way this is going to work is the following. On the end of this wire is a little balloon. What we'll do is we'll put, there's a syringe that hooks up to that balloon. When you blow the syringe up, the balloon blows up and it acts like a sail and it's just going to float right into the ventricle and that's how you're going to put the pacemaker in in these people. Your job as the nurse is going to be you're going to control this balloon. The doctor is going to tell you I want the balloon up. You inject this in. If it doesn't go in the first time, you're going to have to pull this back, balloon down. The doctor will tell you to pull the balloon down you're going to pull it back out. In addition, you have to somehow or another get this pacer hooked up to the pacer box. Now the pacer box itself is needs to be turned on. There's a power button on it. Who needs the battery in first? Uh, the battery should be in. The question is, um, Barb asked, is there a battery in there? There should always be a battery in it. Somebody should be checking that. When you turn it on, and it's going to be hard to see on the video, but you're going to have a number of buttons here. There is a rate, there is an A output, a V output. Usually what you do is you put the rate up to about 100 because that's going to be faster than either you're transcutaneously pasting them or their intrinsic rate. And that's a nice rate to try and see whether you catch it or not. Your A output is your output for your atrium. We're not putting a, a pacemaker in the atrium, so you're going to turn that one down to zero. Your V output is the amount of milliamps you're going to put through the pacemaker to try and get it to pace. We're going to turn that all the way up as high as it'll go. It'll go up to 25 when you start it. So now what you've got is this generator is now sending a pulse at 100 beats a minute into this wire and it's putting out 25 milliamps. That's all you need to know with this. That's it. To connect this to this, you have to use this connector. Now, oops, oops. Oh, there's a spill in aisle seven. Okay. This comes sterile, so you can dump it on the field, but it doesn't absolutely have to be sterile. That's why you can open this one. And what you're going to do is the following. This connects into the V lead. Now we've had occasion where people have inadvertently connected into the atrial lead, but you want to connect it into the V lead. It clicks in here, and now whatever is coming out of this generator is going into here. This needs to be connected to the pacer, and then you can uh, go ahead and float it. If you look, the end of the pacemaker looks like this, and this can't connect into this, which is a source of frustration to a number of people. These are called 
female adapters, you have to convert them to male adapters. All that means is you take these little yellow things that come in the kit and push them in here. And now you've got two prongs. The prongs can go into here. And one of the questions that always comes up is which prong goes into which one? And the best way to remember that is proximal goes to positive. PP. Proximal begins with P, positive begins with B. So the proximal goes to positive. You will see on the pacer itself there will be marked. This one's marked distal. It's got a negative. So that would go into the negative one and then the proximal one goes into the positive one. So now this pacemaker is ready to be inserted. What the doc will do is take this, slide the sleeve over it, and the reason you want to slide the sleeve over it is it makes it a little bit easier in the long run to hook it up to the, um, to the pacemaker. And if you have to adjust it later on, you can adjust it through here. Okay, so this, and it just gets slid out of the way. The doctor will then hand you all of this. So this end is now in your hand. The only thing the doc's got is this wire in their hand. So I'll ask my able-bodied assistant over here, Matthew, yeah. if you would. So Matthew's going to be assisting me here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to then place the pacemaker through here. This is now sitting in the internal juggler. It goes in through here. And when I get to the point where it's 20 centimeters, there's a little mark here. There's two marks here, three marks at 30 centimeters, marks here. When I get to be about 20 centimeters, I'm going to tell Matt to blow the balloon up. And when you blow it up, just pop the thing up. You don't have to push it in slowly. And now this is sitting in the superior vena cava. So I'm going to push this in. The blood flow is going to carry that right around into the ventricle. And I'm going to be looking at the, the um, monitor to see when it goes in. When it captures, all of a sudden I'll see the heart rate jump from 20 or 30 or whatever it is up to 100. At that point, I'll tell Matt, drop the balloon. Okay, and then the pacemaker's in. Now sometimes this will get carried out, and I'll ask Matt, drop the balloon. And then when he drops the balloon, I'll pull it back, and it'll start to capture. Sometimes it won't capture at all. Pull it all the way back. We blow, 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 now Matt blow it back up. Matt blows it back up. We advance it again. Now, okay. Once it's in, Matt drops it. Then what we'll do is lock it, so we'll turn it this way. So you can't inadvertently blow it back up, and usually take the syringe off as well. Now we need to tell how sensitive it is and how well it's working. So what you do at this point is... As a nurse, you'd be holding this box and you say, okay, why don't you do the following? You need to take the output down. And when you go to try and twist this knob, nothing's going to happen because it will have locked. It automatically locks after a period of time. So there's a little green button up here for the key. Push the key and then unlock. Once it unlocks, you can start to turn this down. So we'll tell you, take it from 25 to 20. It's still capturing, down to 15. We're still capturing, down to 10. Still capturing, down to 5. Still capturing, 2.5. And then you get down to one and then a half. Somewhere along the line, you're going to lose the capture. And all of a sudden, you're going to see the person start to drop back, and you're not going to see the beats capturing. At that point, you know that's your threshold. So say you get your threshold at 2 milliamps. What you generally do is either double or triple that. So you would then say, okay, I know I lose it at 2. To be safe, I'm going to take it up to 4. Take it up to 4 or 5, whatever, you know, somewhere in that range. And that's where you're going to lock it in. And then you're done. Everything's done. You've got the pacer in. It's capturing. You can slide this sleeve over to... How do you press anything to lock it, or you just let it lock on? It locks on its own. Locks on its own. This then gets stretched out. This hooks onto here. The dock will turn this, and that locks this in position, so it can't go anywhere. This locks in here. And now you've got this sleeve, so if you need to readjust it and play with it a little bit later on, it should be fine. Otherwise, that's all there is to putting these pacemakers in. It's very, very, very straightforward. You put a CVP in. You turn the box on, turn the milliamps all the way up, turn the heart rate all the way up, and then you can adjust the heart rate to whatever you want later on. Put the wire in, doc says blow it up, you blow the balloon up, you push it in until it captures, let the balloon down, drop your milliamps until you lose it, then double that, whatever that value is, you're done. And then you can go and uh, basically sit down and spend 30 minutes at the wall soft typing your notes in. Uh, questions from the peanut gallery? <laughs>